Hey Lahiru, how are you? Thought I just wanna go through this with you. Um, it's coming along really well. And if I just jump to the beginning of this, if it allows me to do so. There we go. Okay. So, generally I feel um, that the cuts have worked well. I think that it's certainly um, gonna make it a lot shorter by not having the, the, um, the clock and in a way that the, the clock repairers section. So I think that actually is, is um, it's a good cut. I think that that works well. It doesn't detract from the story. It does, um, certainly it leaves a bit of a hole, but not too much of a hole. Um, let me just, now just a few things, animation notes wise with, with this, the, um, the spin, I'm sure that you know this as well, but if you want to get a good spin, um, just make sure that you start off, if you were to track the, say the corner of this spin as it goes round, think of it as a, as a, as a clock, even if it's not spinning around at centre, as it spins, say from here to here, you want to get your spacing like this. So that's the first rotation, that's the second rotation. Then bring it up, increase your spacing around here, and then come in and pad it on that opposite side. And that will give you that flick of that rotation that it will currently doesn't have at the moment. If you look at the tracking in those corners there, it's um, fairly even spacing. It kind of stops, it stops in the middle there and then goes evenly around to the other side. And if you want to have that feeling of a kid very chaotically just spinning around and grabbing it, try and follow that spacing that I showed you. You could even just add a little bit more variety inside that, but I think that that's going to help you in, in the general. And that's not going to, that's something you can do in After Effects, even if you do it rotation by rotation, frame by frame. And in After Effects, if you just use um, stepped keys or held keys, I think it's called in After Effects. Uh, if with that IK thing, um, if you can somehow get a change in the arm, it would be very helpful because if he's drawing like that, uh, you'd expect to have some kind of pivot between his uh, shoulder and his wrist. So if it does allow for that to happen, I think that that's a really important thing in there. I know when you draw, you draw from your shoulder, but you also draw from your elbow. And I think that would loosen that up a lot. I think that, that looks great from the top. Uh, same here as well, he does look a little bit um, monkey armed. If you give him a bit of a straight along the side there, that would help. This one's okay across the top there. Sorry, let me just get back to that, Sam's one. Um, but I think that if you were to try and get a nice angle into there, that would work. I think the hand shape is good, but just something, even in After Effects, if you were to separate that into another layer and have some kind of overlay, overlap on that, so it's not just entirely animated from this point as you've done. I think it's good. And I don't actually think this camera shift is necessary. I think that's an unnecessary thing. I think it, it's there and you can just leave it there. It's fairly clear that the grandfather's there and I don't think you need to um, be too literal in the, oh, there's a grandfather watching me from behind and the, the rack focus. I think you can just simply cut straight from there, straight from the out of focus granddad in the background. I know you love your rack focuses, but I think that if you were to hold it just at this point here, artistically, I think it would be a lot cleaner. Um, it's fairly clear from his silhouette who he is, so when you make the cut, there's gonna be no um, loss of, of clarity and narrative. And I think that would just work a lot faster. So here, that's good, that's all good. And I like the scrub on the head. It's, it, I do find though, he does look a bit of a, a bratty, this sort of thing. Uh, I don't know what it is about this character here, but this particular frame, but the transition from the way he looks and behaves here, here he's like a, a Roger Hargraves, Mr. Happy character. Um, there's something about this one, he's just maintained his volume. I think that here he's got thin arms and a thin body. 
he just seems to have got a bit gargantuan in this frame um, so just be careful about that when you change things like that he does look like he's going to having a bit of an incredible Hulk moment um, so just conserve really be aware of the um, conservation of volume when you're changing frames like that so here he's quite big his hair gets smaller and then so all of a sudden he's quite little this is a very appealing character I like the way he looks and I think that that's the sort of thing you want to aim for with this one and if you can kind of maintain those masses for the earlier frames, I think that that's, we'll probably deal with that incredible mo incredible Hulk moment. I really love that. I think that's great. And again, you've got the same character, and I like the way that moves. It's going to look nice when you've animated it. <coughs> this is all good. That can be done a lot faster. I think that you're way too slow with that one. I think you can just go whoop, like that. So it'll be, if in terms of your spacing, it'll be here for one thing. You can pad it to maybe about there and then straight into the into the, the section where he's holding it there okay so it would come in like or however that arc goes across but have that quick movement across so you don't have this that slow section like that you go straight from here to say to here and then pad across so, so your padding would be from here one two three four five and then one, two, three, four, five, and then skip one, two, three, four frames, one, two, three, four frames, and one, two, one, two, one, two. So something like that. You go to there, to there, and then to there, and then pad like that. Okay, so you have that, that section easing in a bit better. Same with the, the head movements. I think that um, if we just look at him, just be careful when you're moving his head as well. Try to draw your arcs at the beginning. So generally with the head, things tend to, to um, rotate from the atlas at the back of the neck. So if you're having him look down, there's two pivot points. There's a pivot point at the base of the neck and there's one at the top of the neck. So if you want to have him looking down like that, have first of all, um, one rotation from here and and then a second pivot at the top so that would give that feeling of looking forwards and then rotating downwards I know you're just translating it down but you should still feel some kind of rotation in the head in a way that's that's fine you may even want to go more snappy than that maybe you can just be like that straight down and then snap like that because it's 2D and you can get away with that sort of stuff. Actions time. Um, here, I'll, I was actually curious with all these other ones before. I know I'm thinking continuity, and he's got his hand behind his back. It might be nice just to have something sitting behind his back whilst he's doing that, so that we can we get that feeling that he's up to something, but we don't quite know what. Otherwise, he just looks like it. It doesn't draw any suspicion to the viewer. And I think that that'd be a nice thing to have throughout there. And here as well, um, just for continuity, have his arm somewhat behind his back as well, in anticipation with the, the clock, because he's holding it. Um, or because he touches it there, have that arm behind his back so it looks like he's holding something. And the same also continuity-wise, um, as he's, um, sorry, I'm just pressing the left arrow button, I'm not having convulsions. Um, here, that's that's fine, so it's covered there, so his arm's covered. Uh, and here, arm behind his back with the, the object. So just so that we set it up, so it doesn't look like he's, um, throughout the thing that it doesn't quite make sense. So here, if you again hold his arm like that with the little thing behind his back, so we, we see that where he's coming from, we see the context, he's obviously got a clock from somewhere and he's going to see his grandson and he's not just leaning there and he's somehow magically had a clock. You think about where he's coming from and what he's doing. So he's up to something, you can see it in his eyes and the way he walked into the room, you've got to think, how does this scene fit together? Okay, 
Um, and there, he, so he's got his thing behind his back. And now it all makes sense because it fits together because he's got a clock. Great. Um, this is good. I like the way this works. This is good. Um, I actually feel that just to have him going off screen would be enough because you got him like going off screen and then leaning down behind him. Now, I think you're either going to have to do it one of two ways. One is you have the granddad not doing this at the beginning. Just have him actually walking outside of frame and have him perhaps a little bit more in the center. And, and just have this entering from behind. Because I think this is much more important. If I was to lose one of the moments, I'd lose the moving across. Because having this, this context between the two and, and possibly even having the boy a little bit more over here and the granddad so he's not cut off because I think it's an important thing to have the granddad kind of leaning down from behind him and having the, the boy looking from this angle and seeing the two in frame and again trying to think about the way that your composition works have the granddads lying on the top two-thirds and the boy lying down the bottom two-thirds and you have a nice composition this is all good I think it's far too much build up for what it is. I think if you just had them sitting there and maybe not the, the pan in or make it a lot more subtle. And this can be discreet. You can just go tick, tick, tick and don't have any um, of this slow movement because the clocks don't do that. They kind of, they use this hysteresis where they go over and then stop, <laughs> over and stop so you can do overshoot by a sliver and then back. So when you're animating, you'll start, start here, and you go to here, but you actually go over a little bit and then back. And then you go over a little bit more then back, over a little bit more and then back. So as you're animating, it'll get that feeling of a mechanical click, 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 like that. And then this should happen very suddenly. It should come out here. We should fully frame it first. And then it should just <laughs> explode out so you in the spacing will be extremely tight but this frame here you'll still have the bird here so where you've got the bird here should happen um, about here and then one two out it comes so it goes boom and and almost to the point where the the bird would cuckoo straight away because it happens instantaneously it goes at that straight away and in the same way as it goes out it kind of explodes out it should also explode back in as well so here you can almost have pulling here the the bird's heads kind of overlapping with its its um beak down because there's such a strong pull and the feet are out the front like that on the way back and then over here, you could even cartoonify it by having the body way back there now and this beak overshooting maybe backwards on, on the on the pullback and then next frame, the door shut. Okay, so it's this explosion out, explosion in with huge overlap on the bird's head and then this boy sits there in wonder. Ah, oh, but it hasn't hasn't even done the cuckoo yet okay so I, I, I wonder about that I, I wonder if you can probably get away with that cuckoo like that because that would give him surprise and then then have the bird maybe pop out a second time for the second cuckoo maybe that's what would happen you'd have this away and have the same event happening where you've got the bird coming out, coming to the end, and then overshooting, the head overshoots, and then overshoots backwards. So it would come, you'd have your bird like this, coming across, out, in that many frames. So boom, actually, no, let me draw that again. You have your bird in there, your bird 
here and then you bird almost to the end and then have the overshoot so boom and then out with the cuckoo something like that from that angle as well so I think that that might be what you can get away with at that moment so that you really have this interesting bit of comic animation in there I think that that would be nice and I think it's necessary and it, it makes you laugh it's cool it's funny and then have that happening a few more times we'll go, go, go. Oh, but of course okay sorry to hear it it's the beautiful song but I still think that you could have that happening you maybe start with a cuckoo and then the second time it comes out so you just erase everything that I just said for the last five minutes because I'm obviously not reading the script here when the bird comes out it comes out and the bird su is surprised and then he launches into the song um, but I still think that there's got to be something going on there a little bit more than so here we're hearing the song he's enamored by the song he's still singing the song and that's all great but there should be something happening with the bird I think that either the bird is um, doing something with its head or its animation you know talk to Neil it's a cartoon and then the boy the granddad's reaction everything's cool it could be a little bit um, I think it doesn't have to, that's quite a bit hard on the shoulder. I think you could really move your way softly over, creep, almost creep your way over the hand there. So it's, it's slowly slipping over the edges there. Would be helpful. Okay, and just on, a, on a, an audience reaction as well, uh, my eight year old looked at this and when he's finished, he cried. He cried. He says, very, very sad movie. So you've done well in that respect. So I think that that's all good. And this is all good. I'm happy with that. This is all fine. I'm happy with this. Yeah, this sequence I'm, 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 I think will work quite well because it's quite, it's actually just really it's almost a whole bunch of still frames. Um, I'm not 100% sure how you're going to do that one. I guess that can just be done with a sequence of overlapping. Look at reference, look at reference of glowing trees and try to work out a way of simplifying that using layers and after effects. But use reference, do some research, find some reference of trees blowing and think of a way that you can work out a system to simplify that. Okay, so that's all good. Oh, the still frame. I want you to really go to town with this one. I think that here, um, for, for the sake of your career, I think you really need to have the bird coming down and landing, having a flap cycle, landing, and then hopping across and doing something and interacting with this, um, like pecking it or doing, doing something to the um, to the the clock, so I think that uh, in terms of your character animation, get some reference. Have uh, take some video reference of what birds look like landing, and I because I think this is a real this is a money shot. This is a really a good thing. Will open up doors for you. And and do that one traditionally, and you can go over the top after you've traditionally mapped that one out with your, your rigs in After Effects, but I think you really need to go through and look at what that looks like and see what you can do. Don't see what you can do with After Effects, but see what you can do with reference and make it look good. Because again, there's no point in, um, in, in, in doing stuff in After Effects. Now you do have your hop here, but I still think you have your, your entrance. So at least have your way that a bird lands onto here. And we'll look at some reference in, in, in class. So here you got your bird turning, that's all cool. That's all good, he recognises the granddad. And then comes the song. He remembers, so that's all cool. So this is all fine. 
So I think that the, the, the major things that you need to do now is to go through here and work out what are the expensive things and what are the cheap things and work out shots which you can do cheaply and the shots that you can that are going to take some more effort and as I said before this shot here where the bird flies in I really want you to take some time and and do something good with that one because I think that it's a very important shot because the following shot looks nice as well but I think that this one in particular you can go through and, and, and set out all of your your backgrounds and pencil test in the bird and I think that that's that's cool and so most of your stuff you don't really have a whole lot of, of detailed animation going on to the point where you've got a lot of uh, After Effects camera moves a lot of static backgrounds here you just got your arm animated and a layer with a couple of substitution heads. The don't move the cam don't move the camera, don't move the granddad. Make sure he's holding the watch. Here, this is just a, a, a Muppet walk cycle, so that's a pretty easy one. You just got your backgrounds that tick tick, no animation. So go through here, make a chart, and say what can be done with keyframe light animation and After Effects. What can be done as, as um, traditional animation, and then. And then list the background. So here's a static background. There's a previous one, a static background. Don't move the camera. So it's two static backgrounds. Here's a static background, three, with a rigged arm, substitution of faces. Uh, that's another layer. So it's just layers, layers, layers. Four, five. And here is just the boy substitution face. Um, you could get away with two single frames here. And it just means drawing the boy in about three different poses, which is not going to kill you in Photoshop. One, two, three, one, two, three, and then that's it. And here, as I said before, then you need about maybe seven or eight drawings. Draw in the spacing of the, the piece of paper first and parent the hand to that one and then adjust the arm to go with the spacing. Get the spacing right in the piece of paper first. So that's a static background which is good, static background, kid doesn't move, which is great, man doesn't move, ta-da. Um, here, just concentrate a little bit on your, your body mechanics. If he's gonna do that, get some good reference footage of what that's gonna look like, where does it move from, and what do you need to do. Um, generally, you'd probably find your um, arm is down here, and think about what this is doing. It has to move up to about here, so you'd start off with that kind of movement on the elbow and then up to about there. So it's going to end up doing that. So you, the elbow moves up and then, so there's your arc of the elbow. I'll just change the colors. Can I change the colors on this thing? But you get the idea that that's your arc of your elbow moving around. And if that's his wrist down there, if he's, if he's moving this over here, his wrist is probably going to come down to there. Um, and then in the final frame, his his wrist is over here somewhere so his wrist is also going to do the same similar sort of arc around like that so you've got one arc over like, like that the other arc underneath like that and just think about the way that those two interrelating sections of the arm there there's the for the upper arm and the lower arm over here there's the upper arm there's your wrist over there so you've got that movement to there to there and then as it starts to come out over this way You'll be leading your upper arm and maybe lagging your wrist over across there. So that's your, your elbow to there. And then like that, and maybe drag your, your wrist across like that. So just think about it. Get some reference. It's the best way to do it. That's just off the top of my head the way I would plan that animation. Um, and yeah, but as I said, most of it's just static backgrounds. You've got very limited animation. You've got the section with the man giving the clock across there which is a little bit of thinking and the bird landing other than that it, it's um it's very manageable and i think that the largest part of your work at this stage would be getting most of your backgrounds done laying across what are the pencil tests and need pencil testing the rest of it you can get away with layers and um, just pivot points and puppet tools all right so i hope that helps and we'll talk through this in class take care bye